Romans chapter 4. Alrighty, I can kind of remember where we were at in part 3 there. I know I made a lot of points about rightly dividing and that kind of thing between Paul and a lot of the rest of the stuff. And we're fixing to see a good example of that why I mentioned it before, I'm pretty sure, but we'll hit it again a little bit here. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? Pertaining to the flesh. That was their thing, wasn't it? The, the Israel people. They loved being the seed of Abraham according to the flesh. But as we've already seen and we're going to continue to see here, it's not the flesh that counts. It's the inward man. It says, for, for if Abraham were justified by works. Remember justified? We'll start out talking about justification. I think this chapter ends the same way. Justifies being made righteous before God. It says here, if he were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. Amen. If he were justified by works. Now, I brought this up yesterday. Look at the difference in James. Because remember James, Jewish guy, writing to Jewish folk. Yes, Jesus is the Messiah. But listen to some of the differences here. If Abraham were justified by works, he can't glory, not before God. James says in chapter 2, Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? So, if he were justified by works, Paul says he couldn't glory, it wasn't before God. So who's he justified by works to? These people that look up to him, maybe man, I don't know. I, I can't nail it down exactly. But I can tell you this. He says, James says he was justified by works when he offered Isaac up his son. Keep that in mind. That was way on down the line after the promise. Let's go back and see what Paul says. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You know what? James uses the exact same scripture. Seest how that faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled that said Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. James is going to the same scripture and trying to say it was by works after he offered Isaac. Let's continue with Paul. Now to him that work is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're working and you're getting something, it ain't grace. Remember, Paul tells us later in Ephesians, by grace are you saved. It's grace through faith. But if you're working, it's not grace, it's it's debt, it's wages. Watch this. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies, makes righteous, who? The holy, the Jewish, the churchgoer, believes on him that justifies the ungodly. His faith, the ungodly that believes, is counted for righteousness. And David, I mentioned this yesterday, David even talked about this way back a thousand years before Jesus even came. It says, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That's the work of God. Amen. It can't be a work of man. It's God doing every bit of this, giving you grace, forgetting about your sin, covering it up with blood. And when you get to the blood of Jesus, which would come later after David, it would not just cover the sin. It would wash it completely away. And here, here's what I want to get to. Come this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned? Here's the difference between what Paul's saying and what James was saying. How was it reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Uncircumcision before he got circumcised, right? When did Abraham get circumcised? Right after he'd had Ishmael. This is way on down the line. Remember, God promised it. Several years later, still hadn't happened. Sarah says, take Hagar. He has Ishmael. That's when God gives him the covenant of circumcision. 
So was Abraham reckoned righteous before or after that? Before. Way before. When the promise first came to Abraham, he said, God promised him descendants as numerous as the stars. That's where it says Abraham believed him and it was counted to righteousness. That's when he got it. That's when he got justified by God. That's when he got made righteous in the eyes of God because he believed. Now that belief produced all kinds of works and obedience. Right after that, Abraham got up and left everything he knew and followed the Lord. Didn't know where he was going. He was just following God. That's what that faith, that righteousness produces. But it's not the works that produces the faith. It's not the works that produces the righteousness. That comes from God. And that produces the fruit of repentance. It produces the fruit of, of all these things. The works, the good works. And you can see what James was talking about was after he had offered his son Isaac. So that was way after he'd been circumcised. And that's when James claimed he got justified by works. But again, it was not before God. It was before his people. And we're fixing to find out that Abraham's people, people, that wasn't just the Jewish people. That's going to include you and me if we believe and we have the faith that Abraham had. Let's continue. It says, uh, He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised. He got it when he was still, he hadn't been circumcised yet when he first believed. That he might be the father of all them that believe. Amen. Not just the Hebrew people. All them that believe though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Amen. Just like David was talking about, imputed unto them. Glory to God. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Now there's the walk. It comes after the faith. It comes after the righteousness. It's produced by the work of God. You walk it out in a, is it Philippians? Somewhere in there. It says to, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. But the very next verse says it's God that works in you, both to, to will and do of his good pleasure. God works it in, and then you start working it out. That's what Abraham did. Perfect example. He believed the faith was there. God gave it to him. The promise. He believed it. And then he started working it out. He started walking it out. Amen. And it says he had that promise and the faith which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be heir of the world. Heir of the world. What's that old saying you hear in church all the time? You can have the world just give me Jesus. Well, Guess what? If you get Jesus, you get it all. Amen. You might as well start getting in here and seeing what you got. That's the problem. People, they, they get good enough to avoid hell. They close the book and they go to churches that don't never preach nothing but getting saved, getting right with the Lord. That's awesome. That's necessary. I'm all for it. But it's a big book. Open it up and see what all you got in Christ. Because a lot of people, most Christians, I think, have no clue. And that's why I come, to see that you get it, amen. That might sound boastful. I ain't boasting. I'm just doing what God's given me to do, and I'm going to do it. Amen. It's in me. I, I, I feel what Abraham felt. There's a burning in my bones to do these things. I wouldn't have wanted to do this in the, in the natural, in the carnal. I'd just soon stay at the house. I don't I hate reading. I still don't like reading, but I do it because I love God and I know His Word is true and that's what He's given me to do is to give it out. Amen. He's heir of the world and that promise was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. If you can get this stuff simply by doing the law, then what need is there for faith? It's null and void, but that's not the way it is. Amen. Faith is not made void. It says the promise would be made of none effect, but that's not the way it is because the law works wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So if you get this not through the law, but through faith, then you're going through a way that has no transgression. How's that? 
because Jesus already paid for them all. And if you were in him, you got it. Praise God. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Amen through Jesus. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. That is heavy-duty truth right there. Calling those things that are not as though they were. You look in the mirror and you know that God's moved in and done a work in you. And then all of a sudden you're doing awesome and you're keeping it up. And a month in, two months in, a year in, you're still getting it done. And then all of a sudden it feels like the bottom drops out. You started doing stuff you swore you'd never do again. But you know what? God sees Jesus. Even though you see iniquity sometimes in the old man, in the flesh, when you look in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, look past the flesh. Look into the eye. Because if your eye is single on Christ, then your whole body's full of light and Christ is in you. And that's what God sees. And he calls those things that are not as though they already were. Even though you feel like you ain't made it yet and we're still a work in progress, God calls you justified, glorified, sanctified. Even though you don't see it yet, he calls it because it, he calls those things that are not as though they already are. And Abraham's his example. Called him the father of many nations, made him the promise while he was, his body was old, his wife's womb was dead. And that's the faith of Abraham. It's going to finish out talking about that. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He was so old. After he'd had Ishmael, I'm sure that it fell off. Fell off, that's a bad way to put it. But his body, you know, the function that would produce children died because he was 100 years old almost, it says. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Can you be faithful and have unbelief? Think about that man that came to Jesus. His child sick or possessed with the devil or something. Jesus said, just believe. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. In the same sentence, I believe. Help my unbelief. I have ultimate faith that every word in here is true. But when I get faced with stuff, things pop up in my life. There's always that monocle of unbelief that tries to creep in and it comes in from the enemy with fiery darts. He tries to creep in and overtake you. And if you allow him, he will. He can't get your soul, but he can sure destroy what God's built up in you. Because that's his job, to steal, to kill, and destroy. If you're not on guard, if you don't know the word. If you don't stand up and be fully submitted unto God, then you resist all that stuff, and he's got to go. That's how you stagger not at the promise through unbelief. Even when it tries to creep in, you say, you know what? I know the word. That's not true. You rebuke the devil. He has to go. And you can keep walking straight and stagger not. But was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded... Remember what that king said to Paul when he preached the gospel to him? He said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That don't get it done, is it? Abraham, being fully persuaded what he, God, had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. The promises of God are true, steadfast. He is not slack concerning his promises. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Why? Because he believed God. Amen. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. Why? Because we get it the same way he did. To whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. The resurrection. The, the cross was awesome, necessary to wash away the sins. But if there was no resurrection, then it was all void, no in vain. But praise God, he got up. It says, who was delivered, Jesus, for our, our offenses, delivered, crucified, and was raised again for what? Our justification. 
That's what we started talking with. That's how it ends. And it comes through the death, burial, and resurrection for our justification to make us righteous before God. That we can stand with Him, live with Him, walk with Him, be with Him forever. God bless you. Let's try it again sometime.